Bitches! Welcome to Movie Bitches! RuPaul's Drag Race All Stars Season 2 Episode 1! <laughs> this was like a oh, seminal moment in television history. My <laughs> god. I had the best time watching the this episode! The fucking best. It's all of my like fears or worries are erased because it was fucking amazing. It was. Well, like, my worries about, like, how the new rules and stuff. Not entirely erased. Oh, okay. You're worried we'll about get it. there. Oh, with the end? We'll get there. Okay. I am so fucking excited for two things. First of all, the fact that they put it on VH1 and HD. Secondly, that they gave it a real fucking budget. Yeah. They are not joking around. No. They're like, you win a hundred grand. Oh, guess what? Every week here's ten grand. Oh, guess what? You won two grand of this shit. Oh, yeah. guess what? You oh, won yeah. these jewels. Oh, they yeah. are like fucking flush. As Katya said, she could win $350,000. I didn't go to school for math. <laughs> Amazing. So I guess first things first, if you played the drinking game, then you are no longer alive. Um, sorry about it. We did not realize that when we made this, they were going to air all of those things immediately. In a row, repeatedly over and over and over. We tried to play it, and then and we it was just like, oh no. No. Nope. This is, no. I, I, we couldn't even can't. catch up with saying drink. We were still drinking when yeah, another oh, thing drink. came. Oh, no, drink. Oh, no. Oh, no. Not again. If you didn't notice our new intro, um, we had ourselves dragged out, and it's fabulous. Also, if you want to, I know some of you have already submitted your own, um, fan art, which was amazing. <gasps> so, amazing. if any of you feel so inspired, please, by all means, oh God, send it to I, us. I, like, love it, though. But, yeah. like, send it, please. The queens enter the workroom. Yeah. We'll talk about their looks first. Okay, yes. Okay. Oh my God, okay. So, first and foremost, Katya... Zamira comes to finish her face. Comes into the workroom looking like communist Wonder Woman. Like if Wonder Woman had an evil counterpart. Like you know when I drew Magini yes. when her like yes. evil counterpart was in the green outfit with the dark hair? Yes. This was evil Wonder Woman. Bizarro day Wonder Woman. This was Kami Wonder Woman. Throw in a little bit of Daryl Hannah from Kill Bill. <laughs> yeah. I could see her, her literally being in a Tarantino movie. Oh totally. In that outfit. Sure. I'd be like, yep, get it. I get it. Splattering blood all over the screen. Yeah, in, and she's yelling in Russian. Yeah. yeah. Oh my god, yes. Wait, like, like, but, but wait, like, Tarantino, can that please happen? Wait, though, yes. How fucking fabulous would that be? So good. Can you imagine if the Hateful Eight was all drag queens? <laughs> yes. Oh, we've been so Wait, can good. we make that? We can still make that, you guys. <laughs> we can make that happen. The Shady all, Eight? <laughs> the Shady Eight! Anyway, so Katya looks fucking fabulous, duh. Um, oh my god. And I was so excited to hear from her lips. Some of the girls might be more focused on rehabilitating their reputation rather than just winning the competition. On top of her game, yeah. she is not gonna be she shaken. She is here to she... fucking win it because she is a fucking star. Yeah. But I'm here to show the world that I've turned into a total <laughs> monster. <laughs> yes. Yeah. So fucking excited. Yeah. Fucking Alaska and Katya came into this show to on top play. of the world. They're just like, what? <laughs> I came to win, bitches. I am fabulous and ready. Yeah. And yeah. like, they are prepared. So, so then, next comes in. Detox walks in. Oh my God. Looking like some day glow. Glenn Close, Fatal Attraction, she looks, Miami Beach realness. Yeah, I was gonna say, she looked like Glenn Close at like an EDM party in Miami Beach. So then, Alyssa Edwards comes in, looking like some slutty poodle skirt, happy days realness. It was like black poodle skirt, but then she just kind of had a bra, but then there was also a corset, but there was a space between the bra and the corset. The cape was maybe a a scotch too much? <laughs> Maybe. But then again, she was just wearing a bra, so like, you know, you gotta work that out. But she was ex she was embracing her back rolls. Her makeup was on fucking point, mm -hmm. I thought. Mm -hmm. I thought her face looked and really her wig good. Looked great too. And her wig like she Studied. she looked good. Yes. The she, bottom half was like ten percent messy. 
But that's Alyssa. Sure. So Alyssa comes in, and then it's the three of them hanging out for for a minute. And Alyssa's like, oh, look at these mirrors. Oh. And she gets told, she's like a cat. She's like, oh, shiny. Like, she gets totally distracted. Oh, oh. all right. Okay. Yeah, oh, my God. So then Fifi O'Hara walks in. It was like if Bob Fosse does the Riddler. Riddle me this. <laughs> Riddle me that. Watch out, girls. This bitch is back. It was very awkward. Yeah. And I didn't know how I felt about it, except that I wanted it to stop. <laughs> I mean, I feel like Fifi's looks are kind of costumey. I feel like she looks like she's she's like at Comic-Con and she looks great for, you know, at Comic-Con. There's a disconnect with me. I, I agree. <laughs> Everyone's so excited yeah. that she's back yeah. and, and that she's been doing this 365 drag yeah. Instagram thing. That's really cool. It's a cool idea. Okay, I'm just going to I'm just going to be me and if you don't agree that's fine and I that's fine. I'm just saying how I feel. Mm. And how I feel is that it's not exciting to me. I think that it's interesting and I yeah. like the concept. And there's a work like, ethic and there's a talent there. Absolutely. But I'm not like, yes. I'm not gagging over them. Mm. Sometimes less is more. Quality over quantity. Sure, it's early for me, per se, to, to judge her. Sure. But so far, either is from from what I've seen in her previous season, yep. and even from now in her Instagram, mm -hmm. I don't know who Fifi O'Hara is. No, I don't know what her drag personality is no. or what her like shtick is. If you took her body out of these outfits, out of her performance, I wouldn't be able to tell you who that was. No, it's not even that she's a bad drag queen. I don't think she is. Mm -mm. It's just that I don't think she has the star quality that these other queens do. Yeah. Oh. My. God. So next up. So Ginger Minge. Uh, to me, she looked like she was like ripped out of like uh, hairspray. Yes, totally. Um, and, and then. Well, the, yeah, so she's wearing this like cape. Shoulder pad. Shoulder pad. Thing. Designing women extravaganza. And then takes it off and it's like a bathing suit with the with the um, corset rib uh, ribbon up the side, and... I was confused. Was Why did you want to wear that? It looked ribbon. like a curtain. The taste level... It was questionable. Was questionable. The execution? Very good. Oh, great. Roxy Andrews comes in next. Looking fabulous. Fucking fabulous. She looked fierce and hot. Yep. And like, doing her body, Adi. Yeah. Some like... She was just... Full, full, Doing her Tamar Braxton realness. Full, full, full Roxy. Yeah. Deep V, black party skirt. Yep. She looks great. She's she done seems well like for she's herself. She's in a good place. She's in, in a good place. Life. She's in a good place. She's in a great place. That was so. One of the really interesting things for me. Yeah. Was seeing where the queens emotionally are, are in their lives. Yeah. And it's a mixed bag. Yeah. And honestly, we'll talk about this more later. But it was kind of sad for me mm -hmm. to see some of these queens that are so fabulous not in like a really good place. So then Coco Montrese comes out. I gotta say, she looked kind of basic next to some of the other queens. Do you even remember what she was wearing? I'm getting a look on your face like you don't even remember what she I'm was wearing. I'm trying to remember. It was like... I remember the orange. It was like Angela Bassett at a funeral in a deleted scene from Waiting to Exhale. Right, 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 right. The hat, yes. and the dress. Yes. And it wasn't bad. It wasn't bad. But it wasn't fabulous. No, it wasn't a showstopper. No. Yeah. Her makeup did look beautiful. I thought it did. Her makeup was my favorite part of it. Yeah. The look was just like, okay. Alyssa goes, Bitch, that was sold three years ago. <laughs> Girl, we had buried the hatch. We buried the hatch. Do you mean? Dark horse? Oh, you buried the hatch. Okay. How do you do that? Hatches are generally already buried in the ground. Because you go into them. <laughs> yeah. She buried it more. <laughs> it's so buried, it was buried twice. So then, Alaska comes in. Oh my god, I love Alaska. I love her. She is in some hefty bag, gown, bustle, fabulousness. It's like the definition of like garbage fashion. <laughs> but derelict. 
She's got this huge black bow on her head, and her makeup is fabulous. Yeah. And she's just doing Alaska. Yep. She looks fucking great. Well, she comes in with this twirling oh, right. neon she's umbrella. She's like a penguin from Batman. Like she's, she's like a performance fabulous. artist. She really is. Like, and she seems like she's in a great place in her life. Like the best place. Yeah. I think obviously because she's been so celebrated, you know, sure. that's lifted her up. Nobody can do Alaska except Alaska. But I encourage you to try. It's fun. So then Tatiana comes out. It was like if Morticia Adams was going to the club. Yeah, she's just like, like gold. Just but then like touched dripping by black. gold. I, it was very good. At first, I was like, ooh, Tatiana, I don't know if you're going to last very long in this competition, girl, because yeah. that's just kind of fine. It was it was better than Coco. Sure. But it was, it was like, middle of the road for me. Last but not least, Dora comes out in some Ty from Clueless realness. Ty's body with Dion's hair. Yeah. It was a look. You know, I liked it a lot. I liked it a lot, too. Can we talk about mm -hmm. her interview look where she looks like a lesbian art teacher that lives in Santa Fe? <laughs> but like, yes. Workroom Rue comes in. Looking like a Jonathan Adler pillow. <laughs> it was a lot. You could go buy like the RuPaul couch. Yeah, literally. The pillow set. But like, totally. And, and then she announces that the winner of the of lip, lip sync every week gets will get $10,000. So good. It's crazy, so like because it's all stars, they've sort of mixed up when things happen. You know, yeah, they just kind of skipping ahead. Later in the season are happening now. Yep. And so the library is open, and that's the mini challenge, yeah. which is kind of great on the first episode. I mean, obviously they can do it because they all know each other. Exactly. You know. Exactly. And it was so fabulous too because there was so much age beef, and it was like all of this like swirling, like oh, who's here? Who, 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 let's just talk about it. We're mm. just gonna talk about the ones that we remember. That are like worth talking yeah. about. Yeah. So Katya, my favorite read of the night was Katya calls Coco Montries. She goes, oh, I always wondered what the female gremlin would have looked like 20 years later. <laughs> yeah. And I was like, oh, fuck, though. But like, fuck, though, yes. But like, yes. Shade. And then Katya actually <laughs> had the fucking shadiest moment of the night where she was like, Roxy Andrews, I think about you all the time, especially in the morning at the bus stop. <laughs> I was like, oh shit! The cuts are coming deep. Yes, yes. Then Coco read some poems. My darling dear, I can't stand it when you're near. I don't know what Coco was doing. It was very awkward. And then Adore had a really funny joke. Coco Montrees. Doesn't it suck that it took you longer than my existence to figure out what shade of makeup to use? Oh. <laughs> um, then Alaska. I mean, like, no, duh. Alaska... Is gonna read a bitch. Is gonna read a bitch and be funny and clever. Oh. Hmm. I just thought of Jujubee. Oh my god, I love Jujubee. Detox. No, really, I mean that. <laughs> this is actually your intervention. Please. Stop. This. <laughs> then she's like, at the end, she's like, let's get all started. started. And then she falls down and she's wearing like work boots. Like full on like construction boots, which I actually noticed when she walked in. Well, I was like, are those boots? Or, and then I was like, maybe they have heels on them and they're I've like fabulous. Watched, but no, they weren't. This is kind of her thing. I watched um, an episode of Can I? Oh. You a question. question. And somebody asked her, they were like, oh my god, Lasky, like you've been in drag before all of us. How are you doing this in heels? And she's like, the trick is you just wear a dress that goes to the floor and no one ever notices. Because yeah. she's tall anyway. So Alaska wins. Like, no duh. Yeah, no way. Like, it was like Katya and her. Yeah. And everyone else was like pretty good and then some of them were terrible. But that was it. <laughs> Basically. So, and then it's announced that the maxi challenge will be a talent show, which fuck yes, I am so excited and here for this. And I kind of love that since it's all stars, there was no like explanation. Rue was like, show me what you got. Bye. Yeah. Like there was nothing. Nope. Talent show, bye. Bye. I loved that Rue not was checked out, but was just like, yeah, fuck it. Rue seems the gloves to, are off. The gloves are off, and Rue seems to be having a fabulous time this season. The first All Stars was kind of a mess. But kind of 
Um, okay. Kind of? Sure. I appreciate with this season, yes. she really gets it. And she's approached it differently than just your average season of Drag Race, where yes. she's like, look, these bitches are all fucking fierce. And so, like, I don't have switch to... switch it up. It's, yeah, it's got to be a little different. I got to treat them differently. It's yeah. got to be a different thing. So then they're all in the workroom, like, oh my gosh, they're, like, de-dragging yeah. and everything. And Detox and Roxy fall right back into being silly playmates, which is fun. But I was like, oh, this is just, this is hap it's happening. And it's Alaska happening. shuts it down. Alaska's like, I don't do that anymore. <laughs> And then she says something like, the band is not getting back together. together. That does not mean the band is getting back together. She gets it. Yep. Alaska's like, oh, I'm not losing this time. No, she's here to fucking win. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, I would say that Roxy is too, because Roxy came to play as well. But we'll see if, like, down the line, yeah. shit starts to happen. Well, and you know what, though? Hmm. Maybe it's going to bite Alaska in the ass. That she's like, I'm not going to be your friends. With this new format. But do you see Alaska getting in the bottom Absolutely at any point? Right. So then they're all sort of de-dragging, they all sort of have, you know, they're reflecting on how they changed since their season, and Tatiana said one of my favorite things that Tatiana has ever said. I have figured a lot of things out. Like what? Like to not shop at Wet Seal when you're gonna come to RuPaul's Drag Race. <laughs> yes. I was really living for Tatiana for like the rest of this episode. Yes. It's weird. Okay, so I feel like Roxy and Fifi are in the same position, right? They both came off as total cunts in their yep. season. Yep. And now they're back to sort of prove that they have changed and that they're not assholes, right? Yep. And they're both coming at it from slightly different perspectives. Okay. Fifi is like, I'm not that person. I'm, you know, I was like, I kind of got wrapped up and now mm -hmm. I'm, you know, I'm really not that bitchy and I want everyone to see who I really am. If I have a whole public audience that thinks I'm a certain way and I don't want them to think I'm that way. <laughs> oh, you mean so everyone want... thinking you're a bitch? Oh, ooh, ooh. <laughs> but the most interesting thing that you did was be a bitch. Fair. So I feel like you're, you're chaining yourself in. And Roxy says, I was a bitch on season five. <laughs> People like to say, oh, it was in the editing and they made me look bad. She's like, I said that fucking shit. Anything that on this TV show that is said, you said it. I let the competition get to me. I was playing dirty. Now, that was my favorite. Like, okay. It's so good. Can we talk about this for a minute? Yeah. Because a lot of y'all have been like, oh, like Fifi and Sharon staged that and right. like blah, blah, blah. Yeah. And they planned it out. And, it's just the editing. You guys don't realize that it's an edited show. And like, we get it. Yeah. We know about editing. But I loved what Roxy said. I loved it. You still said that. You said it out loud with Cameron. It's a fucking show. You're a character on this show. Yep. You pick what character you play. Yeah. Well, and Roxy said, she admits, she's like, I knew Jinx was winning the fucking show and I couldn't handle it. Yeah. And I said, the only thing I got is to be a twisted bitch and play fucked up mind games on her. I learned from my mistakes and I changed my attitude and there's no way that that can happen again. I don't want to be that girl. So then we get to the runway. So much happened in this episode. Oh my God, we get to the runway like 30 minutes in and we're like, huh, there's an hour left? Oh my God. Also, this episode was an hour and a half. Yes. Yes. So Rue comes out, mm -hmm. and she looks fabulous. She's got a real Carol Lombard, like, sexy negligee. Awesome. It was, like, very cute. Yes. And I liked it. Yes. And so she introduces the judges. Michelle Visage is back. Um, duh. Carson Kressley. Yep. And... Todrick Hall. I'm... And... Oh. <laughs> I'm letting you take this one. Raven Simonier. It's Raven Simonier. No, Simonier is how you say her name. <laughs> They were over pronouncing it so hard. Well, because everyone called her Raven Simone. Simone. Yeah. Simone yeah. It's like Giada De Laurentiis. <laughs> She'll always be like, so we're gonna take our Parmigiano Reggiano, <laughs> and we're gonna make our farro, and we're gonna put it in, and then we take our pasta, and now we're gonna make Italiano dinner. And you're like, okay, but calm down, girl. Part bacon, part pancetta. The bacon for the smokiness, and the pancetta. <laughs> it's like, like every just other. Just tone it. Down it's a like little Alex bit. Trebek when he pronounces like French things. Exactly. Like, Whoa. He's like, no, the correct answer was salon. What is salon? Salon. You are au courant. Voila. So love Raven. 
Simone. Yay. Right. You're gonna have to say her full name because every time you say Raven, I think you mean the drag queen. I mean, I do love Raven, the drag queen. Also, yes. I, I like Raven Simone. I think that she gives... Um, yes, I'm just too. rolling with it. I'm I'm, hey, you know what? Simonier. I take direction. I love I, it. I love it. Yep. Simonier. I really love about Raven as a judge, Raven Simone as a judge, is that um, I've seen her at countless drag shows in LA. Oh, yeah. And she so gets it's like it. she fucking loves drag and yeah. she has seen and done and like she is qualified. If she's a permanent fixture on the panel, I'm okay with I'm that. I'm okay with that. Todd Dracol. Yeah. Not as sure about? They don't need that many judges. No. Well, I'm well no. They, they should only five, have four. They don't need five judges. They only need four. Okay, so the talent show starts. Adore sings a song. This is my thing. It was kind of a okay song for me because it wasn't really a, like, let's get excited, I'm going to pump up the crowd song. It was She too, wasn't the only one to do this. No. And it was a problem that I had with several queens that they did. They picked songs, they picked numbers that were not fun. They weren't fun, and they weren't, like, um, energetic. Exactly. I was like, and it wasn't even, like, a really, a really, really emotional ballad. And even right. that kind of would have been out of place. She talks about how she, you know, she's punk rock and this and that, and I was like, but it was so sort of coffee house. Well, and so much of her Mellow. music is actually very Katy Perry to me, which yeah. is not punk rock, but whatever. I mean, I guess it's an in-between. Yeah, it just didn't seem... Was super adore. To no, me. and and that was a bummer because I know that she's talented and I know that like she can be fun and have exactly. fun and be fabulous and so it was like, where where was that? Mm -hmm. So she comes out literally truly looks like Liza Minnelli. Like like maybe she literally took Liza Minnelli's outfit and put it on. It was very weird. In which case, I almost wish that she had gone there yeah, they, and done like a little pixie Liza cut yeah. and been like, New York, no, 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 or like, you, you gotta ring them bells, you yeah. got like, why not? Life is a crab, right? I don't give a fuck. Do any of that. Like, yeah, live yeah, yeah. it. I don't know. That doesn't feel just... very adored to me, but yeah. Sure. That doesn't seem like something adored it's to It's the reference or get, but, but like, like, then why wear that outfit? Why wear that outfit? The, the outfit didn't fit the song to me. No. That was my confusion. Mm -hmm. I didn't have a problem with the outfit if it's in the right space and time. Right. She looked like, to be honest, she looked like Lana Wachowski <laughs> in a Liza reunion show. <laughs> oh my god. So then it's Alyssa and her talent is variety. variety. Which was great though. She did a variety show. Oh yeah. It just made me laugh. Yes. Talent. Variety. variety. She comes out and she's doing a ventriloquist yep. act. Yep. And then that, she throws that away. She's in this dark black silky sequin dress. And then she does a quick change. So we drink. Yep. And she does like some good but awkward dance moves. Sure. It was like so much. I loved like, it. I loved it, but like a small percentage of me was like loving it because I was laughing at it. A small percentage of me. Okay, a small percentage. I loved it. I thought it was the most fabulous thing that I had seen yet. It, well, there'd been one other thing. <laughs> One of the lines in her song was like, Got more guest gods in the Vatican. Like, I loved that. Like, yeah. she had a good, she's great. I love her. So then Coco comes out and. She looks good. Ish. Yeah. She didn't really, though. She didn't really, though. <laughs> she didn't really, though. She does a, like, no speaking, all dancing sort of like interpretive dance number it was like you know in like a doris day movie like she's getting ready for her date and, and it's like a like, dream sequence like yeah, it's like a like weird dance dream sequence so you're waiting for rock hudson to be on like the other side of the wall and being like <laughs> oh we stood her up it was very weird it was very weird and very it was a lot out of place very out of place. I kind of enjoyed it because I was like, what's what? this? We all make choices, but that was a choice. <laughs> was it good? No. No. Was it well, and kind of a fascinating train wreck? Yes. I wasn't unentertained by it. I was about as bored as the judges were. You could see it on their faces. I was like... They were like... Huh? I was so... It was so out of place. I was like... Yeah, I really, I, I also just kept waiting for something to happen. That's I was like, when are you going to... So, like, are you going to do a tear away and you're going right. to be Janet Jack? Like, what's, 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 well, what's the, the punchline here? Girl, it's a talent show. Your talent 
maybe is dancing. Is most certainly lip syncing. Most certainly lip syncing. Yeah. Do something where you she are lip syncing. She didn't say a word. It was so weird. Then a detox comes out and did a lot. It seemed like she was at Coachella and she, she would like, it was like auto-tune drumming, singing with glow, day glow paint. No, you know what she was? What? She was stolen out of the scene of Miss Congeniality. What are you, Daffy just got paint ears. It was a cool look, it was but a like... a cool look. It was a very different idea. Sure. I think what saved her is she really sold the room. Sure. She had the energy. She had energy. She, she worked the room. Working she the was room. like, it's different and cool it's and whatever. It's weird, but like, okay. Yeah. And I'm ready to see if Detox has anything other than neon up her sleeve. I'm just, I just said it. Maybe the neon's gone to her head. <laughs> You get it? Cause her her hair's neon green. Yeah. <laughs> what would have been fabulous? Yeah. Is if she had come in in like a floor length clear raincoat and either a clear or a yellow umbrella. Ooh, I'm loving all of these. Right. Ideas. So then, what I thought was one of the most forgettable talents of the night was Ginger Minj. I was so disappointed. I was disappointed because we had already seen her sing that fabulous song from La Caja Fall. Do something more, again, low energy. Why'd you pick a Debbie Downer song? It was real down. Pick, like, yeah. something that is an anthem, that is like, yeah. yes, God, Yeah. get it, you uh, know? But she didn't. No, it was, it was definitely the mellow cool down song. Yeah. I felt like this was a song you would sing after already performing for 30 minutes. And then detox was like, like waving the lighter. Exactly. Like, yeah. It was like, huh? And the look I didn't love. It was. So just... she's wearing like this blue jumpsuit, loose, like kind of flowy. Elvis-y, Rita Hayworth and Gilda wig. I, I was hope Gilda's very. A good movie. Oh my god, Gilda's a great movie. Yeah. I was very underwhelmed with all of this, and it makes me mad because I know Ginger's like a fucking fierce queen, and I was like, what's this? That's what I'm saying. I was disappointed because I was just like, I know Ginger, you're better than this. like I know that you are better than this. Yeah. Oh my god. Oh my god. Oh my god. Oh my god. So then next, Katya comes out in like a red sweatsuit. Like, like it was like um, Ben Stiller in Royal Tenenbaums. You know? Well, also I loved it. So it was Katya talent gymnastics. <laughs> And she comes out as like a Russian gymnastics star in like the 1988 yeah. Olympics or yeah, whatever. Yeah. And you're like, but yes. It was so good. And then she peels it off to reveal a like black lace cat suit. And then she proceeds to do fabulous gymnastics. I don't know if we can even call it gymnastics, but I don't care. It was more so like contortionism slash sexy stretching. She slash Feats of strength. This bitch is over here on her hands, pussy popping. All right, Miss Katya, you get the gold from me. She BB'd it, is what she did. She worked the crowd. Oh, yeah. And, like, yeah. just drew them in. Mm -hmm. It's just like. Well, and how fun to do gymnastics. Like, that's the thing with whenever you go to a high school talent show or, or whatever, any kind of amateur talent show, it's always like, oh, another singer. Yeah. And then someone comes out and does fucking gymnastics or something fabulous, and you're like, yes. Oh, you know what I How really much wish? Fun. You know what I really wish? Hmm. I wish Chanel was in this, uh, this season. Oh my god, she would have juggled, she would have tumbled, she would have <laughs> She would have done, done everything. everything. Literally everything. She would have played. She would have had on. flaming batons. Oh, yes. She would have played the water glasses. Yes. She yes, would have yes. sung an aria. While playing the piano upside down. Like, it would have been everything. <laughs> Oh, yikes. So the next up is Fifi O'Hara, talent, a cappella singing. Solo, which makes it even harder. Give me what's another beat to give me life. She just wavered and flopped and floundered and was like a mess. To the club tonight. Girl, find the note. It was just so awkward, and once again, on top of it all, she didn't really pick like an energizing song. No, it was real low key. Her look was like, it had like a medieval times padded, you know, like if you've seen like like the court jester or, or like the Errol Flynn yep. Robin Hood, yep. it looks like that kind of like, oh, we're fencing. Sure. But it's like fashion fencing. 
it and almost, again, it made her look boxy. Like it did. They did all through her season. I agree with Michelle on that point mm -hmm. for sure. Mm -hmm. It made her look boxy. It was mm -hmm. like she was in Mulan. That's what it looked like. You know what I mean? That silhouette was the same. I tried. I really tried to keep an open mind about Fifi. I still will. If she improves, I will be her champion. I will too. I will this too. This episode did not give me much faith. She was not great. So then, fucking Roxy Andrews came out and like stole the fucking show. She really did. She comes out. She looks like Jane Mansfield doing a burlesque act. It was some Gypsy Rose Lee realness and I was like living for it. Like for realsies. There was like three costume changes. There were wigs on. Wigs! Double drink. She had so much energy. She had so much fun. Yes. She was prepared. Yes. She owned the fucking stage. Yes. I was all the fuck about it. I was too. Yes. Living. Like, Gaggy. Yes. Yeah. This is the Roxy I wanted. Exactly. Fucking nailing it. She's the black horse of this competition. She's a contender. For realsies. Watch the fuck out. Yeah. Then, ah, uh, Alaska. Comes out in her Lady Bunny sparkle wig. Oh my god. So much glitter. Love so it. much glitter. And like, she's just like doused in feather boas. <laughs> But then underneath she has like a pink sparkling, it looked like the dress at the end of Little Mermaid when she's on the rock and it's like that purple sparkling dress except it was pink. Sure. And I was like, yes. Because I've always wanted that dress. Because it's amazing. <laughs> and Alaska sings a song that she wrote herself, a comedy song. Yep. About how she's, she's always been gay. Yep. And, and she's, she's the, the gayest. gayest. And it's really it's funny. Funny and fabulous. And it's, again, it's performance art. Yes. You know, as much as Katya, it's just... It's a performance. It's a and, it's, performance. and she owns the fucking stage. But it was so funny. And it was interesting because we had heard this song before at yes. a drag show. Yeah. And it was, I was like, oh, I wonder how I would have felt about this if I had no context for I it. I think I would have loved it so much more if I hadn't heard if it If I hadn't heard it. Because the first time I heard it, I was like, yes, this is everything. I yes. fucking love this. Alaska. So then the other dark horse of the night, Tatiana. Tati pulled it who the fuck comes out. comes out and it says that her talent is spoken word and I went, oh no. Oh no. She's got Demi Moore's hair from Ghost and she looked fucking fabulous and she sang this really witty, silly, spoken word poem about- This piece is entitled, The Same Parts. This piece. Meeting a guy in the club and it's like, oh no, we got the same junk in this front trunk. His stuff's getting thick. <gasps> oh, girl. And I'm getting firm too. <laughs> Cause boys. And it was really funny and really surprising. The Tati I remember in season two was a lot more serious. And she, she was having fun. fun. She was having fun, and I was like, I love it. Yeah. I'm really excited. She owned the stage. Yeah. She had a presence. Uh -huh. She fucking nailed it. Just yeah. killed it. Mm -hmm. Slayed. Mm -hmm. Dead. So then Alyssa and Detox and Katya are safe. Yes. And I'm okay with that. Yes. They were all, like, at my top until other people topped them. Sure, yeah, exactly. Right? And then Alaska was in the top. Yeah, so it was Alaska, Tati, and Roxy, and Ginger? I was unclear where Ginger landed. No, I think Ginger was in the bottom safe. The top of the bottom? Yes. Okay. Like, she was in the middle. And, like, fairly obviously, Adore, Fifi, and Coco, Coco were in the bottom. So and Michelle Visage she... just goes in. Well, first and foremost, she goes... Fair warning. I'm going to break down all the tea. If you get hurt, get over it and up your game. Don't take it personally. You guys are all stars. I'm gonna read a bitch. And yeah. I was like, yeah. <laughs> and then she did. Michelle was not fucking playing around. She was not fucking around. They are holding them to a higher standard. They're like, yes. we're not accepting anything basic or even semi Basic. Above the This par. is fucking all stars. Yeah. Bring your goddamn A game. Now, I will say this. Yeah. Did Adore deserve to be in the bottom? 
Absolutely. fucking movie. Yes. Did she deserve the way that Michelle Visage read her? No. I didn't hate your hair. It's human. Really doesn't matter whether it's human or not. I did it myself. That shows you've done something. Oh, like I finally like your hair because I didn't used to like, you know, it's like the, it, They have a weird relationship. They do. And it's evident. She would go every day that we would do a show. She would go, Michelle, what do you think about this? And Michelle would just go, ugh. We were talking about how a door is kind of in a weird place. Mm -hmm. And to be honest, it seems to me like a lot of the cause of her weird place is Michelle Visage's judgment. I mean, I don't want to get all the blame on that. I mean, that seems like then Adore needs to find a new person to care about their opinion. Well, also, as RuPaul would say in the season one well, reunion, yeah. it's not my fucking job to tell you you're a star. You gotta remember that. It's not my fucking job. If I had a nickel for every time someone told me you can't be a star's drag, I'd have a million billion nickels. Yeah. And it really was upsetting to me on like a personal level because I like Adore and I don't like, I think, I think what it is more than anything else mm -hmm. is that I, I will sit here, obviously, will sit here and read a bitch all day long sure. on their drag and whatever and yeah. you know, like, oh, you know, Derek Barry this or oh, Rebecca Glasgow like that. But if I ever saw that they couldn't take it, right? If Rebecca Glasscock was ever on the screen or was ever in, you know, social media or whatever that she was having a hard time, yeah. I would be the first to be there and be like, no, bitch, you're great. Like, you do yeah. you. Yeah. You know, you are doing something that's fabulous and, like, that takes fucking balls. She seems like she is going through it. Yeah. She's in the middle of something. She's in the middle of something. I think Michelle went in, and I'm down for her to go in. I really am. Mm -hmm. I'm here for that. I wasn't down for her reads on a door. Okay. And she goes all in on Coco's makeup. In your season, you were orange. Tonight, you went from Doritos to soot. And she goes all in on Fifi's look. It totally encompasses your teeny little body, and you just look like a box. That, so they read all of them, and then they go yep. to the top, and Rue is just like, to Tatiana, she's like, are you cinched? And she's like, a little bit. And Rue is just like, I'm gonna key your car. <laughs> <laughs> Fuck you, bitch. It Love amazing. it. Love it. Rue seems like she's having fun. Also, Tatiana. Congratulations on your face. Congratulations on your face. Yes. You're beautiful. <laughs> Season two, a lot of it was, you're so beautiful, you're so beautiful, you're so beautiful. And, and she was a good drag queen and she right. had a lot of personality, but but even more so now, I'm like, you are owning this shit, and you're not just a pretty face. No. And I am so glad. She's not just pretty. She, you know, again, she also was really smart. Tatiana and Roxy are the top two. Well, what, what I thought was going to happen was it was going to be like, okay, lip sync. Yep. And then in the moment, they had to choose who would go home. Yep. Not the case. They send them backstage, and they basically made Untucked happen again, in a way. I hated it. Oh, the whole thing? I hated it. I think it'll get better. I don't like this weird, now you go talk amongst yourselves together. Yeah. If it was like the old Untucked where it was like, you guys are in the gold room and oh, you yeah. two are keying oh, yeah. in the silver room and the top two are just going to talk about who they think they oh, should I get rid of. I hope that happens. That I'm here for. But I will say this. I loved when they cut back to Rue and the judge is having a cocktail party. Oh my god. I said, you know what? I don't need to be paid. I will pay you. Oh yes. my god. <laughs> they were just like, yes, who cares? This is delicious. I, I also cocktail. love Rue's performative drunk. This is delicious. Mm. Mm. The reason that they did it, and I guess I get this, is that if they were to decide immediately, mm -hmm. then there's no opportunity at all for, for the to bottom to themselves. make their case, right. right? At least when they lip sync for their lives, yeah. then it was like, no, I fucking want this. Well, that's why I think it could get better. I feel like they, they kind of just sent them back. They were like, figure it out. Like they didn't give them any direction. And, and I like, love that. There will definitely be more drama. Definitely. Which I am here for. I guess my thing is I just want to see a better way for the I bottom to queens be... to make their case. I thought it was interesting, yeah. and I thought it was cool that Adore was like, I don't think I belong here. You belong here. And I thought that was nice. I thought that was cool moment. It was really nice. Um, and what's interesting is that I don't know how that necessarily would have gone down on the main stage. With oh. Rue. If it had been, let's say it had been like the bottom two yeah. were... And she said that. Rue probably would have sent her home. Right? She said, I need this fire. Yeah. I don't have time for you to figure out if you want to be here. 
you want to be here or you don't. So they, they're backstage. And then they, they send them to these dumb boxes that are filled with lipstick tubes that have the bottom three names on them. <laughs> oh my god, they have to I love it. Pick out the lipstick and tuck it into their outfit to then reveal after they've won the lipstick. I mean, absurd. I kind of wish they had shown us who Tati had picked. Like it's, oh, it's Survivor yes. at the end, they show yes. like, oh, I voted for so and so, right? But like, kind of just be like, that's who would if I'd won, that's who would have got home. That would be interesting, that too. just for really us fun. to know, maybe. Exactly. Maybe not the other contestants, but just or maybe them to add more drama. So it was a really good lip sync. It was a good lip sync. So they were doing Taylor Swift's "Shake It Off." Money again, budget, loving, yes. yes. Compare like seeing in the lip sync her and Roxy yeah. in very similar outfits. Well, they were dueling Demi Moore's. It was Demi Moore in striptease and Demi Moore in ghost. It was literally like Mama Demi Moore and Baby Demi Moore. And it was fairly evenly matched. It I, was fairly... I, was, I, I thought was, Tatiana had the edge, to be honest. I was leaning towards Tatiana as well. I don't know but if was, maybe Roxy has like a booty hypnosis or something. Yes. But she sends Coco home. She says it's because, you know... She tried to think like Rue and she wanted to base it on their critiques, literal performances and their critiques yeah. and who would she send home in that case and not other reasons. I Which don't I think that's like true. Cop out. I don't think that's true. She should have sent Fifi home. I think, I think objectively, and maybe I, I mean, maybe, I guess it's not, it's obviously subjective, but like for me, objectively, Fifi failed the hardest at every challenge in this episode. Fifi, I was confused. It was like, what is this? Is that who you are? Are you a singer? Are you acapella? Like, if that was what she did, it would... Anyway. I didn't get it. I didn't get it. So that's, for me, it was like, clearly, yeah. objectively, yeah. Fifi performed the worst, and therefore she is in the bottom. Mm -hmm. Done. Eliminated. I'm sorry. Yes. Right, so Coco gets kicked off, she yep. goes backstage, she's, she's like, like, oh, goodbye, yeah, this and is so, you know. The TV comes on. And, and Rue was like, mm -mm, you're not done yet, girl. Yep. And so. And you'll get a chance for revenge. For your revenge. And I was like, what does that mean? Yes! So we're not sure yet entirely what it is. At all. At all, really. Is it going to be like a last chance kitchen top chef thing where right. like whoever gets kicked off fights the person who's been winning the subsequent, yes. you know, um, challenges? Is it an American's Next Top Model thing where they have to do the same challenges alongside? Right. And then they get, and voted, then they get in. voted in. We don't know. Well, what do you think it means when they say you'll get revenge? Do you think it means... Oh. If the person who kicked you off gets kicked off, then, like, maybe there's something to that. Then maybe. you would think you get that. Or that they can come back and have the option to kick. I don't know. I don't know. Yeah, there's so many. It's so exciting. Yes, okay. And I'm, I'm excited that they're doing new things. That yes. it's like a whole fun, like, layers but on layers. it still seems balanced. It, it does. doesn't seem like, what the fuck? No, wait, what? But yeah, so there was a lot going on in this episode. So that is why our episode is so long. Apologies. Sorry, not sorry. I mean, you know, a lot of you seem to really like the long episodes, so yeah. you're welcome, I guess. Exactly. Um, you're welcome. <laughs> <laughs> you're welcome. This episode was like more than I could have asked for. It really it was. was so I just amazing. was. I was on fucking cloud nine at I the end of this like, hour and a half of bringing magic. Bringing everything. I love it. I love it. I'm laughing. This is hilarious. This is amazing. All the talent. It was fucking awesome. Everything. Also, yes. I'm going to be out of town for Labor Day. So, um, next week's episode, our review is going to be a little late. Sorry about it. Thank you guys, we're going to have so much fun. So please, again, if you haven't subscribed, subscribe. If you're listening to this, it's been 38 minutes or something. So I'm sure that you are probably subscribed because no one else is still listening to this. But if you haven't subscribed yet and you made it this far, subscribe. Yay! Yay! I don't know why I just waved. That was weird. Bye. Liza Minnelli it's in like, the later years? Yeah, yeah. It's the third reunion tour of Barbara Streisand and Liza Minnelli.